Welcome back. This is the demonstration that I promised. Sorry it's a few days late, but what we're going to do here is we are going to allocate a large array of floats, uh, about a 400 megabytes worth of data. And we are going to fill it all with random data. And this is going to represent an image that maybe that we're doing some kind of operation to in our uh, in our game. Maybe we're resizing it or changing the color somehow and we have to so we have to do some operation on every pixel now we're just gonna find the sum because this is a simple example just to just to show um, just to show the properties of the memory in the computer so we're just gonna find the sum and we're gonna do that by looping through the X coordinates of the pixels first and then the Y coordinates of the pixels and I'm gonna go to the drawing board to see we're going to see visually what that is doing. So let's take a look at the image in memory. We have the x coordinates up here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the y coordinates over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And we have a pixel at each of these locations. And the way this is laid out in memory is each pixel in the X coordinate, each pixel in these rows are contiguous in memory. They're next to each other, sequential in memory. And then when you get to the end, there's this last pixel here. And then the next pixel is gonna be the first pixel in the next row. So if we loop over X first, that means X will be zero. And then we will look at every Y pixel for that zero value. So that means we're going to get something like this. We're going to look at this pixel and then the next Y pixel, keeping X at zero, and then the next Y. In fact, we're just going to go all the way down the Y's. Now, why is this a problem? In the previous video, you will remember that uh, when a, in fact, I have it right here. When a cache level, and this is the L1 cache right here, when a cache level pulls data from the previous cache, it does so in a size of 64 bytes. And what is 64 bytes divided by four bytes per float? Each of these is, we're, we're, so we're assuming that there's only one floating point value per pixel. 64 bytes divided by four floats is gonna be 16 floating point numbers that we pull from the lower L2 and L3 into L1. And so we're actually pulling a bunch of stuff all at the same time. All of these pixels we're pulling into L1 when we request only a single pixel. But then we proceed to ignore all of the stuff that we just loaded in and skip to the next line of the of the image which hasn't been loaded and so it has to be loaded. So all of these 16 bytes and so on. So we're loading a bunch of bytes, a bunch of cache lines into memory at the same time. But there's only so many cache lines that you can fit in L1 cache. So by the time we get to the bottom here, so many cache lines have been loaded in that these top cache lines have been evicted. They've been thrown out. And so when we go to the next pixel in the row, this pixel right here, the cache line that contained this data has been thrown out and that's bad so we're going to go to the code and it's in debug now so that I can show you what's going on here and we're going to we're going to take a look at what index is being used here so when I hover over the index you can see it says zero we're using z index zero first that's the first item in our pixel array but then you can see there are 4,096 uh, floats in every row and in every column. So when we step to the next Y value, then we're gonna be using index, uh, one more. Now we're using index 4,096. So the cache line that we loaded the first time is now not being used and we have to load another cache line in order to get the second value. And then we do that again and now we're loading index 8192. 
So let's put all of this together. We're going to flip it to release mode and we're going to see how long I have a breakpoint down here so it will catch so we can see how long it takes to do this entire operation over the whole image. It'll take just a moment and you can see it takes about there we go it's done so it took 3.5 seconds and mind you this is in release mode so this is fully optimized so now we're going to contrast this with a better way of doing that where we loop over the y values first so I'm going to draw another image here to show you what's going on now we have the same pixel layout as before where we have our items sequentially in memory like this and these are the rows and these are the columns but this time we're going to loop over the y values first so we're going to look at all of the x values in this row that means that when we load this first pixel in and there's a helicopter flying over my house then a cache line gets loaded in that looks like this 16 floating point numbers all get loaded in at the same time and that's great because then the next value we access is the next value in that cache line it already exists here in the L1 cache and it takes only 30 cycles to access and then we do it again only 30 cycles and we do it again only 30 cycles whereas up here we had to pay the what was it we had to pay the 100 cycles 100 cycles every time we hit a new row so this should be much faster now according to this model and again we have it in release mode well let's flip it back to debug so we can see what the index is doing something interesting must be happening today I hope you guys can't hear that helicopter. So we are finding the sum, we first do index 0. And then next, we flip to the next x value while keeping y the same. So the next index is 1. And the index after that is 2. So we are accessing these values sequentially. Let's flip it over to release mode and run it. giving it a moment to compile initializing test values and then that is much faster only 400 milliseconds so that is about a factor of 10 increase which matches the difference between our um, between our L2 and L3 cache access time which is in the hundreds of cycles versus our L1 cache access time which is in the tens of cycles. So I hope this impresses on you how um, non-algorithmic improvements like changing the order of the loop right here can get you much much faster code and this is not like the previous example we used was the the finding the division example was a little bit contrived this is something you run into all the time and thinking about how your algorithm access, accesses memory and where the the memory is being stored in which cache level and how to do so efficiently can give you order of magnitude increases in the performance of your game of your program and a quick thank you to frozen legend here a commenter in my video who gave me the idea to do this particular example. I was gonna do something else, but then I realized that his suggestion was a lot better. So thank you to him. And we're gonna continue next week doing more optimization along these lines. See you then.